Who's that? Commander Claw. Who's back? Commander Claw. All right, I'm back. This is your host, Commander Claw, coming with another episode of Breaking Brews, and we're still staying with our favorite commander, especially in my analytics. So let's keep brewing with Marnius Calgar. If you know what he does, go ahead and skip to the part where it says track those triggers. If you do not know what this commander does and you're new to the channel and you have not subscribed, first thing you need to do is subscribe. But anyways, he is a Esper color commander. That's black, white, and blue with two generic. And he's a 3-5 power and toughness with double strike. And let me read a little bit more about his abilities on this card. He's a master tactician. Whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card. That means any token. Uh, any token, people. Any token. Anyway, his next ability is Chapter Master. Tap six mana. Create two. Two, two white Astartes warrior creature tokens with vigilance. So, yeah. He's a super powerful commander because he does so many things on one card and he just has payoffs and the best thing he does is he has draw cards when you create tokens you know how easy you do that almost so many cards out here make tokens of some sort and when you do that with him on the battlefield you draw a card that's a win that's why he's super popular definitely then you just add double strike so you can go for lethal and commander damage come on man what are we doing out here um wizards of the coast what are we doing out here moving on okay so i got probably like four or five cards for you to add to your deck they're going to be more utility right when i mean utility it's just a you do one thing it triggers another thing and it triggers another thing that's why this segment is called track those triggers because i need you to keep in touch with what you are doing Okay, because when you are making tokens, you're drawing cards. And when you are drawing cards, you are probably going to win the game. Probably. I like to say that's a high percentage of winning the game when you draw more cards than your opponent. Card advantage is a real thing, players. The more cards you draw, the more opportunity you get to play cards and play winning cards. Moving on. The first card I have for you is from the Karlov of Manor series. I almost said mansion. I want to say mansion, but it's not. Anyway, officious interrogation for white and a blue. If you don't know that color pip, that is called Azorius. Anyways, this is an instant spell. It says, this spell costs white and a blue more to cast for each target beyond the first. Choose any number of target players. Investigate X times, where X is the total number of creatures those players control. Okay, let's, let, let's break this down. So, it costs two mana for the first player, okay? If you ch decide to choose another player, it's going to cost an additional white-blue. So, two players is going to cost you a total of four mana, two white, two blue, okay? Then you investigate X times. Investigate means you create a clue token. And when you create a two clue, clue, clue token, you tap two mana, sacrifice it, and draw a card, Okay? So you're going to investigate X times where X is the total number of creatures those players control. Okay. So what are we doing here with this card? This is, this is a major card draw spell slash token generator at instant speed. So why would you use this card? Why would you use this card? You would use this card to take advantage of how many creatures are on the battlefield before a board white happens okay because remember this is at instant speed so if another player decides to board wipe and there's a player with six creatures out there you can tap this for two mana target that player and you get six clue tokens and that's going to be six opportunities to draw cards however if you have marnius calgar out on the battlefield since you created six clue tokens Actually, you only get to draw one card. Uh, ooh. Yeah, you get to draw one card, I believe. One card for because that one player has that many creatures. So you created, even though you created six tokens, it's only seen it one time. So investigate X times where X is the total number of creatures because it's one time. So you get to draw one card per player pretty much. So for one player, you draw a card when you create a token for how many players, for how many creatures they have. 
yeah don't get your hopes up that you get to create that many clue tokens that would be so busted um but let me know in the comment section if i'm wrong i really doubt it anyways uh if you never played with clue tokens before they are a nice substitute for card draw especially in decks that don't have the ability to draw cards um generally green doesn't but they're not making clue tokens they're usually making um food tokens in your game in life but anyways this is a really powerful spell to get payoffs for creating tokens and creating card draw i believe it's a game changer it's from that new set go ahead and cop it i know it's not that expensive it can't be moving on to monastery mentor for three mana, it's a 2-2 two, two creature human monk prowess. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one white monk creature token with prowess. Uh, this is simple and straightforward. Um, for each spell that we play that's not a creature spell, we're creating a token. And when Marnius is on the battlefield, we draw a card. Plus one advantage on every time you play a spell. Non-creature creature spell. Um, you've seen this card. It's actually very popular, um, especially in Monk decks and Jeskai decks. Uh, just to give you an uh, idea how often non-creature spells are played, they're played often. So that means your enchantments, your planeswalkers, your instants, your sorceries all count as non-creature spells. Moving on to our next utility. We have the Forensic Gadgeteer. He's making clue tokens too. Um, for three mana, two colorless, and a blue. He's a 2-3, the Dalkin Artificer Detective. And he says, whenever you cast an artifact spell, investigate. Create a clue token, which is over here on the left-hand side. Um, activated abilities of artifacts you control cost one less to activate. This effect can't reduce the mana and the cost to spend less than one mana. So... What does that what does that mean? That means all those clue tokens that would cost two mana to crack and draw a card now cost one. Okay. I don't believe that's really the power of this card. What you're not seeing is all those artifacts that you have out there that have abilities, most likely they have abilities, they cost mana to do something. So reducing it by one is major major uh you tell me in the comments below what artifacts that you run in an esper deck i mean run in marnie's calgar deck that has activated abilities that you need to pay mana to activate and how much one less would be is well worth it then also remember whenever you cast an artifact spell you get to investigate so you're making another token trigger triggering marnie's calgar which lets you draw a card Pay off, pay off, pay off, pay off. That's what you want to do with Marnie. He's such a value generator. That's why he's super popular. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun seeing payoffs. Okay. So, yeah, you you know what's coming up. You know what this card is. Three times your tokens. It's an expensive card, but if you crack it, it's a great feeling. I just did it. I just did it. Trust me. Trust me. Okay, we have Ogier Tak, Deepest Foundation. He's a god, 6-6 six, six legendary creature with vigilance. If one or more tokens, creature tokens, will be created under your control, create three times that many of those tokens instead. Whenever Ogier Tak dies, return it to the battlefield tapped and transformed under its owner's control. So, I mean, this is straightforward. When you have Marnus Calgar and you use his ability to create two, two, two Astartes warrior tokens, you're making six. That is overwhelming. Just know that it costs six mana to cast this god creature. And I'm telling you, the last ability is very hard. It's difficult for your opponents to really remove him because he turns into a land, right? So it's almost like mana ramping after they remove it. So it's almost like, what, was it Source of Plowshares? They exile your creature, and you get you get you get to put a land into play. This is what this this is exactly what this does in a way. But when you have it on its land side, you can bounce it. You can return it back to your hand for I believe it's three mana. I'm not gonna go into it this much, but this is a great card. It's worth the money. Um, 
Anytime you create a creature token, you're making three times. That's a lot. That's a lot. Because you're going to need those three creatures to do something else later on. The cards I recommend. Moving on to win cons. Remember those tokens, creature tokens that you were creating three times the mini? You're going to need something to have payoffs, right? First thing you probably think of is blood artists. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. We have blood artists. You know, whenever blood artists or another creature dies, target player loses one life, you gain one life. That's great. But you're going to need another creature that can do the same thing or an enchantment. But if you did not buy the pre-con with Marnius Calgar, this is the Sanguinary Priest. Okay? For four mana, this is Astartes Cleric. Okay, this bad boy has lifelink. He's a 2-4. Blood Chalice is his ability. Whenever another creature you control dies, Sanguinary Priest deals one damage to any target. Okay, so, yeah, the downfall is he costs four mana to do it, right? But the payoff is it deals one damage to any target. So, maybe you're not able to win the game yet. But you need to eliminate something, something that is threatening your board state. And I'm telling you, one damage to any target, it can be a planeswalker. You know how powerful planeswalkers are. They're powerful. The loyalty abilities is crazy nowadays. They just do so much. And if they're not dealt with, they're going to win the game for sure. So what I like about this card, he does have lifelink. So anybody attacks you and you block, you're gaining at least two life. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. I even forgot to say it. When he deals one damage, when another creature dies, you gain a life. He has lifelink. That is so when you ping a player, you gaining life at the same time. This this bad boy is crazy. This bad boy is crazy. So you know, you know, somebody does a board wipe, they lose you and you had six creatures. Okay. You're doing six damage to any target. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. You got to add it, add your boy to the deck. Uh, Sanguinary Priest. Highly recommended. Next up, we have this card I really don't like. It's recommended on EDH Rec. Um, I am a proponent of cards that usually cost three mana and they reduce a spell by one. Okay. I don't like those all the time because not all of them are good. Sometimes they're traps. But, you know, they can be replaced by better cards. So I'm going to show you the card that they recommend. Then I'm going to show you a better card in my opinion. Okay. First, first up we have is Heartstone for three mana. It's an artifact. That reads, the cost of each creature ability requiring an activation cost is reduced by one. This cannot reduce an ability's generic mana cost to less than one. Is that good? Is that, is that really good enough to take a slot in your deck? Tell me. My answer for this is no. Why? Because this is so... Oh, granted, we play narrow niche cards all the time, right? But if your deck is not littered with creatures that have abilities, which they probably, you know, they do, right? Reducing one is not worth it, in my opinion. It's not, it's not worth it. I'd rather do something else that gets me more mana. Some, some condition, some scenario that gets me more mana. And I have a better substitute for this card. It's actually one of my favorite cards. All right, it is. All right, it is Forsaken Monument. It's a legendary artifact for five mana. It's under five dollars right now. Okay, and I think it's a sleeper. Uh, people use this various in various ways. It's a legendary artifact. It says colorless creatures you control get plus two plus two. So think about all those doctors that you have. They come. They they are one ones now. They three threes. That's, that's that's a pretty big buff, okay? Uh, the second ability. Whenever you tap a permanent for colorless, add an additional colorless. That's where it really shines, okay? Then the final ability is whenever you cast a colorless spell, you gain two life. All right? So that means artifacts. Artifacts. Whenever you play an artifact or a colorless spell, you, like an Eldrazi, you gain two life. You may not be doing that often, but... To the second ability, whenever you tap a permanent for colorless, add an additional colorless mana. Think about how many lands and mana rocks and 
sometimes creatures have the ability to tap for one generic mana. It's a lot. It's a lot. And think, you're in Esper Colors. It's going to be difficult to mana ramp. It's going to be difficult to mana ramp. And you don't want to... Sometimes you run into a situation where you're spending mana on spells and you're wasting a certain color pip just to meet the generic casting costs. Why? Why? I have a solution for that. Because it's important for you to have access to all the color pips when you're playing with these three color commanders. And they you you need it, especially at instant speed for counter spells, deflex, activating abilities. Stop burning your color pips for the generic mana costs. So you have Vault of Our Arch Archangel, which is recommended on EDH Rec. It says tap it for colorless. When you have Forsaken Monument out, it's gonna tap for two. It turns into a soul ring. It turns your mana into a it turns your land into a soul ring. So when you have a spell that a huge X spell, you tap this and you get two colorless. Two colorless instead of the one. Okay. You also have Reliquary Tower. Uh, tap it again. You make it into a soul ring. I'm telling you, you throw Forsaken Monument out there later on in the game, players don't see how you mana ramp and have the mana ability to cast bigger X spells. And you then don't underestimate the power of one. The power of one is game winning, players. It's math. It's math. That one more mana for an X spell is game ending. Trust me, I've seen it too many times. So if you have Soul Ring, it says tap it for two generic mana. If you have the Forsaken Monument out, it's tapping for three. That is a Basalt Monolith, players. That is a Basalt Monolith. You're able to do so much more. A Soul Ring that's tapping for three is already powerful. Late game, you're late game with Forsaken Monument, you're ramping extraordinarily. Um, back to more mana rocks. You have Talisman of Progress, right? You can Tap it for colors or tap it for specific colors, and it deals one damage to you. But you're turning it into another soul ring, except for, for two mana. But I'm telling you, Forsaken Monument is a must-add in three pip colors specifically, except for anything green. I mean, that's okay. But as for colors, don't underestimate your ability to mana ramp. You There's creative ways to do it, and I just showed you a solution. Moving on to the next cards, actually the next video. Um, make sure you like it. Ah, ah, sorry. Make sure you watch it. <laughs> It'll be brewing up soon. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy any of this content. I am Commander Claw. Peace out.